It is so good to see y'all uh, this morning. Y'all look incredible. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you look pretty good on this Sunday. <laughs> and every other Sunday. Well, this morning, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, it is my honor to introduce our preacher of the hour, none other than the Reverend Dr. Daniel Lee. He is incredible. Yes, let's give it up for him. I love it. Y'all are ready to go. I didn't even have to tell you to clap. So Dr. Daniel Lee is professor and academic dean uh, for the Center for Asian American Theology at Fuller Seminary. Uh, he is an incredible pastor, an incredible leader. And if you haven't seen the forum, if you weren't there in person, and if you didn't join us online, do yourself a favor and check out that forum. It was absolutely incredible. So All Saints Church, can we just do ourselves a favor? Give it up one more time for Dr. Daniel Lee as he comes on up. I used to travel with, with Chase, introducing me wherever I go. <laughs> like, work that crowd and get them ready. Amazing. <laughs> wow, great. Um, as, I, as I thought about our time together uh, this Sunday, I reflected upon uh, what happened last Sunday with the threat of violence against this community because of how you have been a haven for the LGBTQ community. And my thought uh, went to this verse in the book of Daniel, because that's basically what theology professors do. <laughs> uh, in the book of Daniel, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were about to be thrown into a blazing furnace because of their faithfulness to God in a hostile land in Babylon. And they tell King Nebuchadnezzar, this. If we are thrown into the burning furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us, and God will deliver us. But even if God does not, we want you to know we will not bow. I heard about how you came, even with the threat of violence, Last Sunday, and I thought of you, and I thought of this verse. Eve, we know that God will deliver, but if God does not, we still will not bow. We will do the faithful thing. Anyone who dehumanizes our LGBTQ family members is not of God. Because our God created all of us in God's image. Just by showing up, we are doing God's work. So with that in mind, I am very happy to be with you. Uh, I want to say happy Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Yay, all right? <laughs> I am wearing my uh, Asian Pacific American uh, stole. If you see, I have all the different fabrics from different heritages, uh, which basically includes East Asian American, Southeast Asian American, South Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islanders, adoptee Asian Americans, multiracial Asian Americans, <laughs> right? Big family, right? All of you are invited. All of you are part of it. I mean, maybe, maybe some of you, you want to be Asian American? Well, you can be part of the family, right? <laughs> Incredibly diverse in various ways, but all under the umbrella of Asian American Pacific Islander identity. At Fuller Seminary, which is a block away, which is the reason why, I mean, multiple reasons, but I accepted, accepted this, uh, this invitation because I said, this is my neighbor, I want to be here with you. And uh, over there, I teach theology and Asian American studies. And the intersection of the two, the fact that our God cares about human identities, who we are, that we don't leave it behind when we enter into God's presence, we don't leave behind all the different identities that we are. We bring them and we unite with Christ 
in our identities, in all of who we are. God does not love us despite of who we are. God loves us in who we are, as all who we are. A couple of weeks ago, this ministry leader, who was basically involved in a global missionary organization, uh, told me with a great sigh, we are part of this cohort, I am training them on what it means to be Asian American. And she sighed and said, I am now far in my career, but I know so little about what it means to be Asian American. I know so little about my own history, my own heritage. And I know she's not alone. This is a communal problem within the Asian American community. Why? Because of the erasure of Asian American studies, Asian American history in our society. Now, you might be thinking, you know, I, I live in Temple City, and I heard that there are some Asian Americans over there in Temple City. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Uh, and my kids attend the public school, majority Asian American students, majority Asian American teachers. The curriculum, though, curriculum, though, still not much about Asian Americans. They know more about black history. Thank God for that. We need that. But how much they know about Asian American history? The 170 years of Asian American history. That is very difficult to know. You have to, now we live in California, and I heard there's some ethnic studies, some Asian American studies in California. I didn't grow up in California. If you go to UC, Cal State, even conservative places like Stanford, I heard they have Asian American studies over there, <laughs> which is just American history, right? American history. But there's still so many parts of the U.S. where you can't even, you can't even study Asian American history, even at the college level. You definitely won't get it in a media school. You won't, you won't get it at primary school. You won't get it at secondary education. You might not even get it at the, at the college level. This is the reality. So when Asian Americans talk about us not really knowing what it means to be Asian American, this is a structural problem, not just an individual one, right? That's hard for us to know about the first immigration law that the U.S. ever had was against Chinese Americans and later on, on Asian Americans. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. And later on, 1920, Asian Exclusion Act. All together, all of you. And people think, you know, we have a lot of recent immigrants. And somebody said, uh, well, you know, most of us came recently. This Asian American person said, well, most of us came recently. I was like, why do you think so? Did we just say, oh, you know what? We should come. I heard U.S. is a nice place. <laughs> Did we just th think of that in the 80s? No. No, before 19, uh, 1965 Immigration Nationality Act or Hart Seller Act, we couldn't come. Right? That's why it's, uh oh, somebody said, well, Asian Americans are only, what, 6% of the population. Why do you think so? U.S. has must a memory on excluding Asian Americans, right? Wow. Now, you might be thinking, we're in L.A. We're in Pasadena. Uh, November 6th, 1885, is remembered as Night of Terror or Black Friday in Pasadena history. That is when a mob burnt down the Chinatown in Pasadena. So when recent immigrants come to Pasadena and say, I guess we're the first ones here. You know why you're the first ones here? Because you burnt, you burnt down all the history of the longer history of Asian Americans, Chinese Americans in Pasadena. 
And after that, we had a red line law, so they can't live in Palestine. That's our history, folks. Right? Now, it turns out the fact that that area, you know, there's an 85 degrees Taiwanese bakery right around the area now. So I guess we are, we're back, baby. Right? <laughs> All the mob violence and lynchings up and down the West Coast against Indian Americans, Filipino Americans, that's our history. With all that erasure, it's hard for Asian Americans to know who we are. But God knows. That history is not lost on God. And when we recover that history, we're doing God's work. When we learn about that history, we're doing God's work because it is not lost on God. An Asian American uh, student told me, you know, uh, I'm so glad that I am speaking out for black lives because it is, our, it is because of our culture as Asian Americans that we don't really protest. That it, this is actually how we are formed as Asian Americans. We're quiet people, compliant people. That's why we don't protest. And even when there's API hate, we don't protest because it's who we are culturally. And I said, have you been to Asia, my brother? <laughs> I recently heard they overthrew a president in Korea because they protested. Do you think even, even Japanese Americans are relatively quiet, but you go to you know, Okinawa and you talk about the military base, so they protest. It is not culture. You have internalized the narratives of Asians being quiet. This is not, this is propaganda that you've internalized. This is not true. That's not true in Asia. It is not true in Asian America. 170 years of Asian American history and Asian Americans fighting every single one, every single fight, right? A fight of resistance against oppression, doing God's work. But if you lose that history, you think you're the pioneer. I'm the first one. And I say, please sit down. <laughs> Don't forget your elders. Don't forget your elders. Right? They said, I'm the first one to learn from the black community as an Asian American. I said, good. There's so much to learn from the black community. But that's what Asian American studies and activists did 50 years ago. Please sit down. Please sit down and get in line. That's what happens when we don't know, don't know our history. Uh, not only societally, but not only history, but individually, it is very difficult to keep track of ourselves, to know ourselves. Um, Asian Americans, when they watch TV and see things, and now you, you might be thinking, hey, there's a lot of Asian American representation on TV. There's actually even like action movie stars. But when I was growing up and so many Asian, that's like last five years, folks. Before then, we internalized all the negative stereotypes and we said we don't want that. And we find ways to bury to deny, to reject parts of ourselves, to set aside, to abandon. We say this has no value. My Asian American has no value. And I realize over the years, so many times Asian American identity becomes a source of pain. And you know what, what happens when that happens to you? You say, well, let me downplay it. Let me present myself in such a way so I can be presentable to our mainstream white society. Let me make myself invisible because if I do that, then maybe I won't face the pain. In so many ways, Asian Americans find different parts of themselves that they've set aside. 
And I like to say that, you know, when I was 10 years old, and I'm, I got made fun of for different things, I said, you know what? I told myself, hey, don't ever embarrass me again. Stay away. I'm going to stick you in a corner somewhere, lock the key so you don't come out. So I can be presentable. Parts of my parents and how they represented me, I said, well, look, I don't want that. You're embarrassing me. Get a little door, put that, put that identity in there. Lock the door. Put the key away. And then after what you realize, there are huge parts of who you are that is gone. You don't realize the fact that they're gone. Lost selves. What the Lord tells us is that all these lost parts of who we are, as Asian Americans, but all of us as well. Think about that for yourself, all the different aspects of who you are. You said, I don't want this to be part of who I am. I mean, that's basically what the idea is, right? To be in the closet or to lock the closet and say, I don't want this to come out. But God knows. That self is not lost to God. God knows more deeper about ourselves than we do. And when we recover that, we're doing God's work. This morning's text from Revelations, it says, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And I think of it this way, that often God knocks at doors I didn't know about. I forgot about it altogether. I locked the door. It was tucked away. But Jesus is knocking and saying, open this door. Let this part of yourself out. Embrace this part again because I will bring healing. And this part of who you are has gifts that other people need. You need to be whole. God knocks at various doors. Did you might not even forget? You might not have remembered. Oh, I forgot. This whole part of who I am, I've locked away. So often for Asian Americans, that's what you see what it feels like as we do that work of integration. But as a whole for all of us, they're parts of who you are. The Lord is knocking and saying, open. Let me come. Now I'll have fellowship with you. In knowing ourselves, the Lord guides us to embrace all these lost parts of ourselves. And in being led and opening these doors to our God, we do God's work. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.